What's up again, everybody? Dash IO is my absolute favorite hero from this new Bright Lights set, and she is incredibly fun to play. So today I'm going to show you my week one build that I've been playing for technically more than a week. Uh, tinkering with, I've built seven different lists of Dash IO, and this is one I feel like is doing particularly well. So I'm going to break it down for you and kind of walk you through it. By the way, if you want this deck list, and the sideboards that go with it and the matchups and that sort of stuff, feel free to become a patron and support the channel. Uh, otherwise, there will be a full link in the description to the full deck and you can kind of tinker with it as you see fit. So let's start by talking about what Dash IO wants to do. Dash IO is a wizard. Did you know that? It says mechanologist, but she's actually a wizard. She's a 36 health wizard uh, that has four intellect and can just look at the top card of her deck at any time. And when you're doing that, you have the capability once per turn to play a mechanologist item with cost zero or one from the top of your deck as though it were an instant. See, I told you she was a wizard and it costs one extra to play. So anything that costs zero automatically off the top of the deck is an instant speed one cost uh, item that you can play. Anything that costs one, like for example, I don't know, this prismatic lens uh, costs two to play. And that is about it. That's her effect, that's her ability. But what does this do for us? Well, it allows us to one, play things at instant speed, two, gain action points wherein you might not be able to gain action points, and then abuse said action points to power one of the best weapons in the game. The symbiosis shot is absolutely incredibly fun and it fairly insane as far as its uh, overall use case. So let's go ahead and just sort this deck by the old subtypes here on Fabrary and break it down in the easiest terms possible. So this is a boost version of the list. I think you can build, and I have built Dash IO in a variety of different ways. Um, focused on more combo, focused on more items, less items, focused on boosting, focused on other things. Uh, the way that I have settled on her for this list is a standard boost list, but this is not the kind of more boost focused, uh, you know, like triple boost into a max V list. I've tried that. It was a little less consistent. This feels pretty good. And uh, when we're looking at this, we are putting in all breakpoint attacks. We are looking to just break all the points. Every point that we have, we want to break it. So uh, we are running a dive through data because it has a, a break point. You can boost it and it opts if it hits. We're running heist in the main board because uh, it allows you to boost away items, then bring them back. And it is really, really good. It's like the best card uh, in the deck in a lot of respects. Well, not the best card, but one of the best cards in the deck. Med X, uh, we run two of the reds and I'll talk about why two and not uh, one in a moment. But essentially, this is just a, a threat that your opponent has to assess based on what you have left in your hand if they want to let this hit. Also being a break point is kind of nice. Uh, Overloop is something that comes in from the sideboard more often than not, simply because it costs two, but this is perfect for longer matchups that are trying to grind you out. And that is one of the biggest downsides to this deck is that everyone is going to try and just grind you out. Uh, and uh, we have some capabilities of playing against that, which is kind of nice. One of those being Payload. This card is so slept on. This card is incredible. Just being able to off of a blue and a two card hand, uh, or I should say a three card hand because one with a blue and this, you can go dive through data, pitching a blue floating to boosting and then payload. And yes, I know it's not flashy, it's not fancy, but it's something that players that you're playing against don't often assess or don't often prepare for. And if you pop Goliath Gauntlet before you start this whole affair, you're pushing four damage and then you're pushing eight damage. And that is oftentimes enough to just win you games in the uh, end game. If you're pitching away payloads and finding these at the end game when your uh, deck is very low, you can just crush people and that's very good payload. Super, super good. We run one blue because we can go look and find it off of one of our items. Pulse Wave Harpoon is traditionally a three of just slam dunk. I cut one. Why would I do that when I'm running two med X's? Why not cut one med X and run three Pulse Wave Harpoons? Well, interestingly enough, Pulse Wave Harpoon doesn't have as much use in a deck that wants to sometimes break the chain. And this deck in a variety of time, uh, cases and times will break the chain, not just off of Teclo Foundry Heart, but because we are indeed running Home of Fiendal and Spark of Genius, and these break the chains. Plus, sometimes we just sneak in an item from our hand and then keep going. 
but more often than not, it's those two cards that I mentioned, very powerful yellow cards. Breaking the chain happens more often than you think. And with this construction of the deck, based on like pitch values and cost curves, you're not necessarily going consistently three wide on boost or, you know, even crazier off of boosts. Uh, and because of that, Pulse Wave Harpoon is still good, but not as good as you would think. So therefore we run two. If you disagree with me, that is great. Leave me a comment down below and tell me why you think it should be a slam dunk three of, and I will so gladly hear you out. But I will tell you, I have played enough of this deck and a lot of this deck, I'll put it that way, to know that oftentimes Spark of Genius and Tome of Fjendal just get a little bit in the way of this getting maximum value, specifically when we're not running like uh, other zero cost boosts besides zero to 60. Throttle is actually not in the main board. It is a sideboard card, and I stick by that because it costs two. Again, we're running off of a smaller cost curve, like lots of these are ones, right? And uh, we're not running yellow zero to 60s, we're not running any other zero cost boosts, and therefore having a throttle that uh, you want to follow up with something that cost one isn't necessarily something we always can uh, pay for and cover and push. Torque Tuned is literally in the sideboard as a uh, just a six block, and sometimes we can use it for a uh, you know a four block on ourselves. We we pop with Phantasm here, and it blocks for four in other matchups if you want to bring it in. Plus, you can just like fat deck your uh, fat deck your fatigue matchups and throw it in. It's not bad at all. Under Loop is key. This card is hugely key. In fact, we run five of them. I cut one blue because I played around with the, um, some other blues in the. Uh, in the overall like main board and sideboard, but uh, this is a really, really powerful card just because it threatens recursion. And that's something this deck really needs to do, which is why Overloop comes in often in recursion matchups as well. Zero to 60 is a shoe in main board. We got uh, red and yellow zipper hit. I was off the red zipper hits for like, I had like two of instead of three. And the more I played it, the more I was like, this is just like the nuts, right? Because uh, it's just a one for five boost. And that is fantastic. So we have the break points there. We have some sideboard med magnetic shockwaves. Technically, they are main board, but oftentimes they are literally just pitched. But you can do some kind of interesting things with magnetic if you set it up in specific matchups. And it can just win you the game as a silver bullet card in a couple of different matchups. And so we definitely play two of. And then Scrap Harvester. This is a recent addition because... Uh, I wanted to try out the tech that they put in the article on fabtcg.com where you use scrap harvester to scrap your blue backup protocol and then put a counter on prismatic lens as like a pseudo like stopgap for infinite combos and not fatiguing out. I don't buy it yet, but I'm going to try it, okay? This I added like three days ago. I lost one fatigue matchup. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I guess I'll try it. Uh, so it is what it is. Uh, we'll look at equipment later, but let's look at the items. Okay, this is where people get a little contentious as well. The item side of things. In the main board, in most matchups, we run 13 items. And those 13 items include two backup protocols, two backup protocols over here, all six boom grenades. We do not run the blues. I used to. I tried it in other lists. It's fine. Blues are cool. You can run blues too if you want to. And Teclo cores. So again, this is 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So one backup protocol blue goes into the sideboard. For fatigue matchups, I bring in, uh, now I do, Prismatic Lens. Uh, cognition knows really, really good. I highly recommend it. When all of our attacks push a breakpoint, except the blues, when all of our attacks do that, Cognition Node is always a threat for recursion, and that's really, really good. Um, we bring in one extra backup protocol blue into fatigue matchups because it allows us to do, again, this little combo. Otherwise, if you don't want to do that, then maybe you just leave this number at two, but 16 items maximum in the list. Now, this means that maximum you can put 16 charges onto Symbiosis Shot. Now, why is this card so good? Well, all you need is the action point and the counters on it to actually fire this weapon. And we are going to uh, be able to fire it a lot based on some of our non-attacks. Now the non-attacks uh, and specifically high octane are where we need to start talking. High octane is the bread and butter key of this deck. This is why the deck exists. If you're not playing high octane, you're not playing dash IO correctly because high octane is why she functions. We are setting up boosts. We are setting up, uh, you know, two to three boosts, and we are shooting with the the uh, gun for like three shots. Okay, 
and this functions to basically just give us the gas in the form of action points to fire the pistol multiple times. Our opponents will oftentimes just try to block out our attacks the best they can and take the pistol shots to the absolute noggin. If they want to take four and then six to the dome, that's fine because eventually our items stack up, they try to block out our attacks, so boom grenade gets less value, and then we shoot him in the face with the uh, symbiosis shot for, you know, like if, if we're running 13 items and we go all the way to the end game, 26 damage for essentially free that our opponent doesn't really want to block feels quite good. And on the other side of things, as far as non-attacks are concerned, two bios update, those are main board. Uh, I've tinkered back and forth with this card because it's so good as a three block, but the red slot in our deck is, is pretty contentious. There's a lot of reds that we want to run. Uh, Spark of Genius is really great. It's a three block. It's yellow. It can go get us like a, a tech low core, which is a key um, piece to our just overall functioning. And uh, especially because we're running a lot of one costs. And so this is a really good card. Also, if we have uh, an item on the top of our deck, we can play this out before that, gain an, a second action point by cranking said item. Uh, and then in doing so, we can play this, draw a card, and keep going. And that's exactly why we have Tome of Fandal. I cut it from three to two. I played around with three of them. I cut it from three to two because I don't like finding it off the top during our boost turns. But whenever you play around that, or if you can stack up a second action point, or use your Achilles Accelerator to gain a second action point after a first boost, this card's pure, absolute grade A gas because you just draw two cards, and then you can push more of our attacks. And this is really essentially, it is a red line deck. As you see at the very top, there's 32 reds in this list. Uh, and like, if I go to just show the deck in arena, yeah, like this is 32 reds in the main board. Uh, and more than half of the time you're, you're drawing into these reds, but we still have a good, uh, you know, amount of yellows and blues and those yellows and blues do something. Like we have two blue throttles, we have uh, yellows that are uh, breakpoint attacks that basically act as reds. Uh, so we try to weave in these yellows and these blues that can both supplement our turns as far as pitching, but also be played in a pinch to uh, set up combos like underloop blue into our uh, you know big swing payload uh, feels really good still because we're still putting you know a boost down into a payload to try and win the game. And this deck has performed. Quite well. Oh, I, I should mention there's a remembrance in there because fatigue, because fatigue. And then, of course, we have the, uh, the arcane barrier tech. This deck has performed really well overall, in my opinion. I think it's one that uh, definitely takes a lot of getting used to. The play lines for this deck are wizard esque. You are literally playing a game of uh, Kano, except your combos are easier to digest and they are spread out a lot more over the course of the game rather than just one big combo but this is the deck that i think if you wanted to pick up dash io this is perhaps the easiest and, and best place to pick it up as far as like budget is concerned outside of your crown of providence and outside of your teclo foundry heart legendaries and even adaptive plating is pretty cheap outside of that the rest of this deck is very approachable to purchase and run with like your tome of fiendals are probably your most expensive card everything else here is just like rares commons a couple of majestics that aren't too bad and not too terrible in price like maybe pulse waves a little bit expensive but really honestly heist is probably the most expensive card after tome of fiendal and maybe i don't even think spark of genius is that bad so for me like this is a really approachable deck to just pick up and try playing uh and if you want to run it out it, grab the link from the description try it out try to make your own sideboards and things like that mess around with it but it it really does feel quite good in general these backup protocols are insane stacking up counters on symbiosis shot is awesome i'll tell you the truth this deck is really fun to play and it is really really cool so i highly recommend that you start here from this point with dash io and just try running with her run with it see how it feels don't forget to always look at the top of your deck even when you already know what it is and let me know how you feel about the list in a comment below as always thank you so much for watching and for all of the people that made the number go to 17 you're my favorite that's right bye bye now <laughs>